Hello and welcome to another Atypling Philosopher video with myself Jonathan MS Pierce. This is a Ukraine War Update Extra video where I give you some extra tidbits to help you understand what's going on in the war in Ukraine and some uh, greater in contextual information for the conflict. Let's start by looking at uh, the drone hits or whatever it was that hit the two airports or military airfields in Russia. This is the one in Ryazan, uh, which is southeast of Moscow. And uh, let's have a look at the, the picture. So it appears that a fuel truck got hit and this then damaged the plane behind it, which is a, a type of bomber. You'll see that the back of that plane is is, is going to be out of action for some time, that, that uh, piece of kit. It's one of those. Um, the uh, there are some satellite imagery to show exactly you know what had happened there it is before there it is after some kind of explosion and the back of the uh, the back of the plane took some damage uh, and I love that just I was talking about fuel trucks the other day and about how they're using 1967 trucks <laughs> just brilliant um, I, the idea of these hits wasn't so much about the amount of damage they did or didn't do. So here you can see, you know, it's not the end of the world. They've maybe lost the use of one bomber for some time uh, and some fuel and a fuel, fuel track. What do you do? But it's 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 a statement to Russia saying, look, this is what we can do. We can hit you when you're not expecting it and where you don't think we can. And we can do that. Uh, and you need to be careful. Um and so that's you know good for the for the Ukrainians. The Engels Air Base, which is uh, over more to the east, this is a first look at some high resolution satellite imagery. Uh, Defmon says, uh, "I agree. I think the white on the ground could be the frozen fire fighting firefighting foam." Um, and Sarah Hansen says, satellite image of Engels Air Base taken this morning. I believe there's firefighting foam visible under one of the TU-95s. One TU-95 taken out. Could a pro look at this? So this is the idea that this bomber could well have been taken out. You've got a whole bunch of fire crews and, and whatnot, whatnot. And that, that you know, that's fairly significant for a triple of TU-95 to be taken out and at an airbase where they think they are particularly safe um no report says to me the cockpit also looks bended or unaligned uh some kind of um not quite looking right to him at least um so yeah that's interesting uh, development that in terms of um the capabilities of the rush of the ukrainians so here is a comparison satellite imagery, just to uh, give you some kind of idea of what might have happened. Um, yeah, so uh, let's move on. Oh, no, I don't know what that is. Uh, I want to show you this. So this is a Radio Free Europe uh, video talking about the good old Gepard, and I showed you, or Gepard, I showed you a Gepard uh, taking down a cruise missile in my frontline video this morning, which was pretty cool um, to see that happening. So these are fast becoming, you know, sort of minor heroes in this conflict. These almost obsolete pieces of kit, auto cannons with radar. They've got, broadly speaking, a five kilometer range, the auto cannons. I mean, it depends what you call your range because it's like a triangle. You know, you're talking about range along the ground or range right up in the air. And the further up you point it, obviously, gravity is going to affect the range there. So there will be, you know, it might only be, you know, three kilometers at, at that at, at that kind of angle. I don't know. It's up to five kilometer range. And the radar, I thought was a 25 kilometer radar, but there's, there's a bit of talk about it, maybe being a bit less than that. But anyway, really useful. I'll read out the um, the subtitles. Oh uh, no, I won't have the uh, I won't have it on that loud either. So Germany has given Ukraine around thirty Gepard anti aircraft vehicles. I'll turn the sound off now.
Uh, their main purpose is to protect ground forces during combat. They can hit targets up to three kilometers high uh, at a range of four kilometers. So, however, these anti aircraft vehicles also have other roles in Ukraine. They destroy Russian cruise missiles and kamikaze drones. We receive an order as soon as the target enters our control zone, no matter whether it is a drone or an aircraft. Uh, we move out of the firing position very quickly. This kind of anti-aircraft vehicle needs terrain. Without trees or other obstacles that would interfere with the radar. That's how we scan the area. So basically it needs nice sort of ideally flat area with no trees, nothing to get in the way of the radar. And then it, it can... Uh, um, it can operate well. So their troops have taken two months to uh, master the, the, the Gepard. So German military specialists normally plan on 18 months of Gepard practice. So that's, you know, nine times less time it has taken them to master uh, the controls. It's all controlled by the computer. You just need to get used to the vibration of the turret, the data input procedure, says this Ukrainian soldier, and other details. If you don't follow the procedure, the computer may glitch and you'd need to reboot it. Just turn it off and on. Um, and that's a waste of time. Yeah. Uh, it says this other guy, it's like driving a car for the first time in your life. At first it's hard, but after you get used to it, it becomes easy. First, an instructor climbed inside and showed us everything. Then he sat behind us with a translator. And explained the whole process. That took a week. And then we started practicing. I'm obviously reading this out for those who, who listen to the podcast, uh, to this video. The Gepard can detect Iranian-made drones up to 16 kilometers away um, long before they come into range, but crews face a shortage of the Swiss-made 35mm shells for the twin Gepard cannons. This is something I've talked about quite a lot uh, recently. Switzerland has banned exports of its anti-aircraft ammunition to Ukraine. Quote, we don't need that many shells, particularly if the target is a Shahid drone. You fire three shells from each barrel and the drone is downed. Wow. One of the crews hit 10 Shahid drones during a single mission near Odessa. This is the perfect weapon against drones. Wow. One crew's taken out 10 Shahid drones. Germany has promised to send seven more Gepards and is looking for new sources of ammunition. This would be a, a prime, um, you know, opportunity to manufacture this themselves. May, maybe Yuko Bromnoprom, I think is the name of the, uh, in fact, we're going to talk about them in just a second. Uh, I don't know why you popped up. So here, for the first time since 1991, Ukraine launched massive production of 152 millimeter ammunition for Soviet artillery. The production is split between many cities to avoid vulnerability to missiles. Ukrainian celebrities wrote hello to occupiers on the first rounds. This is and I, and I talked about the this company manufacturing these shells uh, over the last few days, just hoping that the capacity can be enough to provide the huge demand of the artillery units up and down the front lines. But it would be great if these guys could also make the Gepard rounds, because if they can't get them from Switzerland, if they can't get them from elsewhere, then they will simply run out. They, they need them. Um, but this is a fascinating, <laughs> um, I always say that, uh, video, because, well, first of all, it's the claim that there are T-90M breakthrough tanks. So this is the most modern version of the T-90, which is the most modern tank the Russians have, apart from the T-14 Armata, which is a kind of prototype, not, not really being manufactured. Now, the question with these is how many do they have and how many are they able to make a month? 
Now, according to Vantage Point North, that has a pretty good uh, analysis of all the different tanks that that the Russians use and how to spot the difference between them. So it's a really useful um, website. This, according to them or him, uh, the T90, there are 350 in active duty, 600 in storage. So that's quite a few, right? And if this is your number one tank, why don't why aren't all 950? out there on the front lines why aren't these the number one tank you have why are they consistently bringing out t-64s and t-62s and going through this modernization process of all these really old tanks where were these 950 tanks that's what i want to know and when you look at oryx who have detailed all the losses right and you go down their losses of russian tanks these are confirmed 100 percent confirmed you know, or at least 99% confirmed visually. Uh, they try really hard not to make sure there are duplicates. So let's have a look at the tanks. There's 1,541 Russian tanks have been confirmed visually to have been lost. Obviously, that's very conservative. There'll be more. If we just look at uh, T-72s, for example, 35 T-72As, 8 T-72AV, 213 T-72B, uh, 71 T-72B OBR 1989, so on and so forth. So all these varieties, 244 of them, 22 of them, uh, 3 of them, 193 of them, uh, 94 of them, means that, goodness me, a shed load of T-72s have been taken out in their various forms. When we come down to T-90, you have basically two types here. You got the T90A, which is known as known as the uh, Vladimir. Um, I don't know why that's gone there. Uh, oh goodness, these are all every single one of these is hyperlinked. That's uh, fascinating. I didn't know that. So that goes. So if you uh, press on each one of these, two destroyed there, one damaged there, one destroyed there, it then takes you to the visual evidence of that. Um, so that, that's so uh, I need not press on that. But anyway. Uh, the 27 T90As, so the T90As are the uh, initial variant of the T90, and then it was upgraded to the T90M. So they've lost 27 T90As and 7 T90Ms. Uh, so proportionally, you know, that is, that's not many out of 950. So the case is, the question is, do, do they have these 950? Do, I mean, do they really have that many? And where are they? Uh, do they leave some of their best tanks still around Russia on defensive duties just in case Russia are attacked or whatever? Here's a really interesting article by the Insider, Business Insider. Russia says its T-90 is one of the best tanks in the world, but it's having trouble in Ukraine. Okay, uh, so it's a most modern tank. Um, it presents the T-90 as one of the most advanced tanks in the service today, armed with an autoloader service 125mm 2A46M main gun. T-90 has a firing range of 5km in its basic form and it it's, is additionally equipped with a cord 12.7mm heavy and 7.62mm PTKM coaxial machine guns. With a crew of three, the basic version of the T-90 is propelled by a 1,000mm 12-cylinder engine, allowing for it to reach speeds of 60km per hour on roads and 50 off-road. The T-90 is capable of firing with advanced um, reflex anti-tank guided missile system, which is designed to strike tanks with explosive reactive armor or helicopters. In terms of protection of its own, the T-90 is protected by a combination of contact explosive reactive armor. So I've talked to you about ERA. Uh, to, to those who don't know, if it's surrounded by explosives, basically, on usually on its turret. But but also it can be down the side and all over the armor basically. And you see what happens is when um, a, a projectile hits the reactive armor, it explodes outwards and back, and and that explosion actually stops the uh, the the turret or the armor from being penetrated by the projectile. Um, so it sounds counterintuitive. It's like you're you're putting explosives around your tank. But that explosive actually ends up protecting you from the explosion of the projectile and the penetration. Um, and multi-layered steel armor, blah, 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 blah. So at its root, it's a modernization T-72 in the twilight years uh, of the Soviet Union in 1980s. By 1989, the project had morphed into a distinct and independent endeavor, which led to limited serial production beginning in 1992. 
Um, so as a result of the bad press accrued by the T-72 and T-80 in the first Gulf War and the first Chechen War, Russia's arms industry felt pressured to heavily market the T-90 to export audiences to make up for such bad press. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, uh, but before long, the export of the T-90 to T-90S had attracted the attention of Russian military leaders who initially ordered 200 examples of the tank under the designation T-90A after licensing a knocked-down version of the tank for production in India, which is actually the T-90S. That's what I'm going to talk about soon, where a thousand were built. The T-90A received the moniker Vladimir after the death of the tank's main designer, Vladimir Ivanovich Potkin. The newest version of the T-90 is T-90M, which is touted as a new standard for Moscow's T-90, uh, T- T-90S that it seeks to upgrade its fleet into, or the T-90s. Um, its principal upgrades over the T-90A include the utilisation of reactive ex- uh, explosive reactive armour and an improved version of the main gun, which increases the range and accuracy of the T-90M compared to earlier versions. Okay, uh, first re- revealed in 2017, so on and so forth. Um, and its performance in Ukraine has been a little bit dubious. Despite on it, uh, its on-paper advantages and promotion in Russian media as the best in the world, the T-90s have run into serious serious issues in Ukraine. They've reportedly lost 20 Vladimirs, uh, actually 27 now, uh, and as well as two T-90Ms, well, actually that's seven now. So um, there you go. While Russian media sources have pointed to the further delivery of T-90Ms to the Russian armed forces during the invasion as evidence of the resiliency of the Russian arms industry, the discovery of French optronic technology in a T-90 captured by Ukrainian forces raises questions about the durability of the supply chains which support T-90 production. So they actually could be whacking a bunch of other um, stuff that they can find in the event that they can't make it themselves. Um, although the T-90 has not lived up to much of its hype in Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the ever-distant arrival of the T-14 Armata to active service likely means that Russia will have no choice but to maintain its fleet of T-90s for the foreseeable future. So then, let's go back to what I was going to show you, which is this. Russia delivers brand new T-90M breakthrough tanks to the LPR. And not only that, but apparently 200 of them. Right, uh, which is absolute n- nonsense, really. Um, uh, but there you go, and it's because this is what the guy in it says. Apparently, are the two hundred of these have been um, delivered, which is interesting language because it's like has been delivered. So what Noel says: a new batch of T ninety M has reached the Luhansk region. Alexander Kotz, a Russian war course, a war reporter, talks about a total of two hundred pieces. Let's remove the zero and it becomes more plausible. So he reckons 20. And he says that have already been delivered to the zone of special military operation. Of course, there's no evidence for that. There's there's just however many there are in here. And we'll just have a look at that in a second. Uh, what's always interesting is looking at how these this is reported. So if I just scroll down here, it's same, 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 same. All these different languages, all the same text, all just you know, Russian bots giving you the same text saying 200 T-90, 200 T-90s, 200 T-90s, all comes from this one guy just saying, yeah, you got 200 200 of these. Yeah, Uh, I don't think there are 200. And are they brand new? So this is where I always talk to you about like concentrating on the little things. I was watching this video earlier and I and I wanted to know, like, because I'm sure they're struggling to make these things. Are these definitely brand new? Or have they been cobbled together from elsewhere? And obviously this is all, you know, propaganda. Well, actually, that does look pretty new. That looks pretty new. So maybe some of these are new. Um, and that's a nice paint job. A uh, bit of a... Uh, bit of a, a chat. Don't know what he's saying. It's in Russian. And then, right, that was a bit... Right, if these are brand new, look at, look at this. What's going on there? That's interesting. And there was another shot there, this. So if you look, I don't know if you can see really clearly. Some of these barrels look, there, that was it. It was this one. You look at that and you look at this. This isn't brand new. So that's not a brand new T90. If it is, it's it's just been maybe sitting 
it's maybe seen no use because it's been sitting in a yard for three years or something and it's it, it's rusting this is rusting so some of these might be new i you know i'm not saying they all look like this but um some of them certainly are not new uh is is my point there um but then i was looking into the t90s again and um they've they had sent previously eight naked t90 tanks so these ones aren't naked they they, they, they are covered in era and got all their bits and pieces on but apparently ukraine uh, have received or the russians in ukraine have received eight t90 tanks um uh, these were spotted in the samara station in southeastern european russia this was back in october uh being sent without anything on them um so these could well have been new or at least in a factory but maybe they just don't have the stuff to put on them so they're sending them down and maybe their cannibalized tanks are already down there to put on so era and other bits and pieces um, and this is, you know, at the time when the uh, Dmitry Medvedev, um, leader of the United Russia Party and former president uh, and prime minister, had went around this factory and they were they were doing up T-62s, I think, and T-64s. T yeah, they were modernizing 800 T-62 tanks, uh, possibly because they couldn't build enough T-90s. Um, you know the slow pace of production as it as it hints at here that they were having to modernize really really old tanks and then you see this russia stole upgraded indian t90 tanks to use them in ukraine so this is a, a piece in bulgarianmilitary.com but it is a drawing on work of a, a an indian reporter who who's saying we sent a bunch of uh, tanks to russia to get modernized back in 2021 and uh, it, it turns out these are these are the T ninety S's, which are called um, uh, T ninety Bishma, uh, and they sent a bunch back. Don't know how many actually, but then they started seeing them with Russian soldiers in being used on the front line. It's like, hang on, those are Indian tanks due to be um, modernized, uh, and it's, it appears that Russia has basically nicked them and uh, sent them to the front and you know he was questioning whether they they had permission to do that blah 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 um so that that's pretty interesting uh and if russia are doing that what does that tell you what does it tell you about their stocks or of these tanks anyway uh, just a little bit of a, a look into the t90 um and just again r returning to this this issue here it's like if they have 950 actual t90s themselves the russians why are they one are sending in naked t90s to the front two uh why they came in to send in 200 t90s now but looks only like about 20 of them and they're rusty um or at least some of them are rusting in places and don't look brand new three why are russia stealing old uh, why are russia stealing exported indian tanks t90s's that have been sent back to be modernized why are they using them um so that that's that's the question uh, i'm sure or the questions I, i'm sure you can help answer those in the thread below thank you very much for bearing with me that's mainly about one tank uh but uh, there you go that's how i roll um please like subscribe share um, and uh, help out my channel in all the ways. It's all down in the description below. But if you fancy buying some stash to show your support for Ukraine, uh, pop along to uasupporter.com forward slash ATP. Uh, and um, that ATP bit on the end will allow uh, my channel to get a little bit of commission. So if you bought a cap, for example, check some of these lovely caps out, um, then you uh, will be helping out my channel as well. So thank you so much. You take care and I will speak to you again.